Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this hamster. Over the letters or inside the letters, so you can't even see him. It's Harold, and I want his anti-camera and gyroscope to stop spinning him in the other direction. So I've got my thumb up and my finger over here to keep him facing kind of this way. Because he wants to turn around, because he doesn't want to face the camera. My fingers. I don't know why. I don't know why my fingers are anathema to them and that they're fine facing my palm. Oh well though, he's a cutie. I really like him. He is just an absolute sweetheart, but I'm gonna put him back in his cage now. There you go, Harold. He's a good little guy. I have no idea how old he really is. I just know he's older, so he's an older guy, but he's really good. He's a sweetheart. He, you know, he's got his own personality. He's not as happy and friendly and carefree as my other hamsters you know, that I trained by hand from birth, but he's not bad. He's fine. He sits in my hand. He does stuff. You saw. He's a sweetheart. Thumbs up on that. I love hamsters, and I'm glad that you like hamsters, too. I know that I don't know that you like hamsters. <laughs> I don't know you, but there's there's hamsters, and they're sweet, and they're fuzzy, and yes, these cages are criminally small. As soon as I can, I'm going to get bin cages of proper size. So, these are my hammies. I love small, ha the small fuzzy critters. I have to remind people, it's been some time. The hamster is my totem animal, my spirit guide. I was on a sacred vision quest, and I came across my totem animal, the hamster. Thumbs up. Be careful when undertaking a sacred vision quest. I'm pretty sure it wasn't just hallucinations. And as I tweeted last night, I trimmed my beard because it was driving me crazy. And I cut my hair because it was just getting too long. And I've always liked my beard shorter. Maybe not quite this short, but it was so long it was driving me crazy. I've got that mental thing where, you know, people pull out hair. And some people have it so bad that, like, they've pulled out all of their hair, except for, like, small patches here and there. I am pretty good now. I don't pull out my hair and my head, which I did as a kid. I had a big bald spot on the top of my head. But even as a kid, I was self-aware enough. And I took it upon me to ask my teachers to say, if you see me doing this, can you, can you help me stop? And so my bald spot up there cleared up and I stopped doing that. But when my beard gets long, one of the things I do is anytime a, a, a whisker gets wild and crazy, it's pluck, pluck. And so I pull beard hairs out. And the longer it gets, the more that happens. So once I find myself going, that's when I have to to trim it down to the old 1980s Don Johnson Miami Vice look. Even though I'm quite sure Don Johnson never leered into the camera quite like that. Plus, I don't look like Don Johnson, but it's just that, you know, like three millimeters in length, constant five o'clock shadow, which if I had more than salt and pepper beard, way more salt and pepper, it would actually show up. But as it is, you know, you can only just see the vague white outline until it gets brighter brighter until it gets longer at which point you'll be able to say hey there's, he's got a beard his face isn't just glowing for some weird reason thumbs up on that uh, hopefully i'm reducing the sound reduction right now so you can hear how loud my computer is it's actually pretty quiet at this moment even though it's loud if you listen to it when it's really going you can enter the front door now you see, this room here is at the end of the hall. You have to go down the hall from the middle of the building because it's a duplex. You go down the hall and then you go down the stairs and then down there is the front door. When you walk in the front door, you can hear all the way up the stairs, down the hallway, and in this room you can hear the computer going, Wah! from the front door, this thing is, I don't know. Like I say, it's probably on its way out because it runs so hot. I blow air through it to get dust out of it like once every two months. 
or so. Any quicker than that. Any quicker? Any more often than that. Aha, proper English. And I'd just be, yeah, I'd be proactive, but, you know, it's, if it takes a buildup of X before it gets bad and you're constantly blowing it out down here instead of here, if, as long as you're blowing it out in this area, you know, as long as you get it before it's here, you're fine. So I blow it out when it's here instead of constantly keeping it at this level. But even taking the dust out of it and then turning it on, it sounds exactly the same. Loud. So it's about to take off or explode or just, I don't know, die. I hope it's not going to die. I mean, I have no money, so. Now, one thing, I keep coming across things that help, and I need that help because I've got a lot of mental issues that make this difficult. I'm a doormat. I, I should have welcome tattooed across my back. I would rather let people walk all over me than have any conflict by standing up for myself. I keep coming across stuff like there was a, an article about how to apply lessons from roguelikes to your real life. And one of them is, hey, you take time, you extend your time frame far enough. You know, bring your viewpoint up and away from the immediate so that you can have more of a viewpoint, an overview of life. And the farther up you go to look, have an overview look, the more you see that re none of us gets out of this alive. We're all going to die. Our survival rate drops to zero. None of us makes it through this. So whether or not you t go through life as a stick drifting through a branch and avoiding all conflict, or you go through life going from conflict to conflict to conflict in the end, same result. We still die. So if the end result is the same, then why not stand up for yourself? Why not have conflict? to a degree, going from conflict to conflict to conflict to conflict, you know, face first with bruises and, and beatings, that's not going to help you. But whether you drift and avoid conflict or just take that conflict on to try and deal with situations, the end result is the same. So I need stuff like that to help remind me that, yeah, I can do this. I can talk to people and I have to because my situation is untenable. I am minus 400 in my checking account and this happens every single month. I haven't had any money and other people have. And when I, the one time I really tried to bring it up, it was a big explosion of, you know, an adult pays their bills. Yeah, an adult doesn't just engage in financial abuse either. So, I gotta do it. I really, really wish, I really, really wish in this case, I was not an adult. I wish I had an actual adult to come in and take care of the situation for me. Boy, do I wish that. I hate conflict that much. But I don't. I am the adult. And at 54, and next month going to be 55, I've got to be the adult about the situation, or no one is. Yay. So at 54, going on 55, I've got to finally figure out how to grow a spine. Which, I mean, I've had a spine. I'm a survivor. I've managed to survive this time, this long. You know, and it was driven into my head when I was going to alcohol rehabilitation that they pointed out to us, you are survivors. You're here. You're alive. A lot of people going through addiction stuff aren't. But to be an addict, to be someone who is engaging in all this stuff. You have to be a survivor because to be a successful addict, you have to be able to hold down a job and successful addicts hold down jobs because you can't get your fix if you don't have money. And so addicts are pretty damn successful at holding down jobs. The stereotype of a non-working addict is just a societal thing. 
Yes, there are people that are deep enough in their addiction that they can no longer work. But there are those that, like when I was doing it, I held down a job just fine until my addiction got so bad, my alcoholism got so bad I couldn't even work anymore. But until that point, 20 plus years, I was able to hold down a job, keep myself in a home, keep myself fed, pay my bills, and engage massively in my addiction to alcohol until it all collapsed. Yeah, you're a survivor because even after the collapse, I was still there. You may be like, you know, a cockroach or a rat that you can't kill, but is it better to be someone who's not a survivor and dead? Or to be a survivor so that you can pick yourself back up and continue? So I know I'm a survivor. I'm still here. And I hear all the time, all the time, about people that I've met, whether I've known them well or just in passing. They've, they've died. They've died because of their various addictions. Whether it was alcohol or any other drug, they're gone. And I'm still here. So yeah, I just gotta remember that I can do it. It's hard to remember, especially with my growing social anxieties, which is why I still go out and walk to force myself out, even though I avoid people. Not out of hatred, remember, just out of social anxiety and, and fear. I push myself into contact, sort of. I go out into the world. I just don't deal with people while I'm out there. But if you ever see me walking, say hi. I'm, I'm not avoiding people or avoiding situations because I don't want to deal with people. I'm avoiding situations from people because that's the only reason I can, the only way I can get out of the house. And so if you see me walk along staring at the ground and you recognize me, say hi. I will gladly say hi in return and do my best to engage. Because it is awesome, it is cool, and thank you all so much. I have met people. Not so much anymore. I mean, nobody even sends me mail anymore. I mean, aside from that box of goodies, in like the past six months, I've gotten like five letters. I got a box of treats, and I've gotten like four, four postcards in the past five months. Last year around Christmas, I was getting stacks of cards and letters every single day. And now I've got like four letters as stated in that package uh, in the past months. And I, I went and paid 51 bucks for my post office box so that people could send me, you know, postcards and stuff. And nobody sends me anything. It's dark. It's dusty. I'm. Nobody ever sends anything. Ever. 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 Except for you very few that do send, like, the packages, treats from Finland. And then that fellow also sent along a postcard. So, yeah. Uh, the stuff that I've gotten is from a very few amount of people. If you could send me a postcard, I mean, that's why I put my address in every single video saying, please send me a postcard. That's why down in the show more it says, please send me a postcard. I feel so isolated. Nobody ever contacts me anymore. Nobody sends me anything. Nobody talks to me in letters. Nobody sends me email. Nobody contacts me. My channel has grown to over 100,000 and nobody contacts me. I feel more isolated than ever. I am so lonely. I have no friends in person and nobody contacts me anymore online. I got, I got nothing. I am so lonely. It is crazy. But I've opened up 24 hours. Well, no, I haven't. I've just opened up my uh, community tab. I'm opening up 24 hours worth of comments on my community page here so that I can go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me comments. It used to be that I would have to open up, you know, a 24 hours worth of comments and it would go like page after page after page. Now it's like four pages. Very few people leave me comments anymore. My comments have been dying off. No, there's very little interaction anymore. Like I said, I am so lonely. And, and I'm not complaining about the suggestion ideas. Don't get me wrong. I need some ideas for, you know, suggestions for reactions. But 99.99% .99 of all my comments now are, do song X by band Y. 
comment after comment after comment after comment, desperately me going, okay, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice, as I thumbs up, as I, I hope the RNG hits them, and then every once in a while when I can do actually reply, it's so nice because somebody actually said something I can actually anchor with and talk to. Oh! So, if you'd like a shout out, just call for it. If I mispronounce your name, no disrespect is intended. And uh, I'm going to thank 20 to 25 people. Now, the comment, the content of the comment isn't important. Whether it is a good comment, bad comment, a different comment, they're all equal in my eyes. Thank you for having left a comment. So, first off, we have Gary Pace. Thank you very, very much. Ruben Ayula, Ayula, A O J U L A. Thank you very, very much. Brandon Pickett. Yeah, you need to watch the videos and, and all that. So, thank you for leaving a comment. Claude5190, thank you very, very much. Joe Smitherman, thank you. Greatly appreciated. Paige Mastelloni, thank you very, very much. Frito Carleone, thank you. Greatly appreciated. Maiden CBA, thank you very, very much. Alpha the Greatest, greatly appreciated. And Joe Moody, thank you. Young Derek, thank you very, very much. Ellen Meroff, thank you. Greatly appreciated. Mantis AMVS Producer. User, thank you. Greatly appreciated. Constable Lopez, thank you very, very much. Marissa E., thank you. Mahogany Donut, heck of a name. Thank you very, very much. Mila Hutala, thank you. Greatly appreciated. Mama Chell, thank you very, very much. And White Bread Rat, son of a gun. And then Justina Aquavita Mess, son of a gun. Thank you very, very much. Mika Mach 5, thank you. Greatly appreciated. Rick Ragonda, thank you very, very much. Mer oh, no, I already thank that person. So Cameron Cretu, thank you. Greatly appreciated. Grom Garden Lore. Heck of a name. Thank you very, very much. And then last but not least, Gromish. Thank you very, very much. 25 people. You get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people, and that's a good thing. The landscape behind these eyes is not good. I'm still recovering from the death of my wife, and it's not a good landscape behind these eyes and between these ears. So thank you for letting me get into the world, dealing with people. It is a very good thing. Even though I'm experiencing despair because I'm so lonely because nobody talks to me. If you could check out my links down below, like where it says my address, you could send me a postcard or keychain or something. That would be awesome. I got like Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, Google Plus, and a blog. Check those out. That'd be awesome. I need to do better things on my blog right now. I've just ended up with two very pretentious pieces of fiction. But if you can get past that, it's kind of an interesting thing. My thanks to everybody who has donated to my GoFundMe campaign to become a Patreon.com patron. Thank you so much. It is because of you I'm still living in this household. But all of my Patreon.com patrons, thank you so very much. If it weren't for you, I would be homeless. Thank you so very, very much. It's nice being able to live in a house. I do appreciate that. If you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes. I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. If you could toss me a like or a postcard or, or something, that would be greatly appreciated. I do appreciate all positive validation for my existence. And if you could subscribe to the channel and watch the videos, that would be cool too. But I would understand if you don't want to. My personality has rubbed people wrong my entire life. You know, so if you don't like my videos, I understand. If you don't want to subscribe to the channel, I understand. But if you are down with it, I'll do my best to keep you entertained from now until, well, the literal end of time. So thumbs up. So if you could subscribe and send me a postcard, that'd be awesome. Leave a comment. Definitely comments are, are nice. Like I said, I need suggestions for reactions, so I will never say don't leave me comments of do X by band Y. I'm never going to say don't do that because I go and I see new stuff all the time. That's awesome. Thank you. But comments that say more than that are, are really, really nice. And the comments that just say do X by Y, like I said, they've grown to about 99%. All the stuff that says anything else is, is shrinking down to nothing. So, Well, I've got less than a minute left. I didn't mean for this to turn into the, boy, am I very lonely episode, but boy, am I very lonely. I've got so little to do and so few people to talk to and so little people to interact with. Yay. But life is life. I mean, I'm glad to be alive. I've had so many opportunities to be dead now that it isn't funny, so I'm very glad to be alive. 
I got a reaction video coming up. I've got a game video coming up. Hopefully I've got some game videos for my game channel. Link down below. Check that out. That'd be cool. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that, my friend, is a very good thing. I am at just about 20 minutes. So you take care and keep smiling.